Hurricane Milton is barreling toward Florida's Gulf Coast, directly in its current path, the Tampa Bay metropolitan area, home to 3.1 million people. Many of the area's residents have one final day to either evacuate or hunker down and ride it out. But what's at risk when this catastrophic storm hits? The Tampa Bay area of Florida is facing a major hurricane for the first time in over a century. Milton is forecast to hit the west coast of Florida late Wednesday or early Thursday and maintain hurricane strength when it reaches the Atlantic. Hurricane winds push seawater, called a storm surge, onto land. Milton is forecast to deliver a deadly storm surge of 10 feet or more of flooding to much of Florida's Gulf Coast. While wind speeds could drop and downgrade Milton to a lesser category, the size of the storm was growing on Wednesday. That puts more coastal areas in danger. Winds, carrying trees and debris, could damage standing homes and destroy mobile homes and cause power and communication outages. And then there's the rain. Some areas of central Florida will get up to 18 inches of precipitation. According to the National Hurricane Center, Milton brings a, quote, high risk of life-threatening flash and urban flooding in metro areas of Tampa, Orlando, and Daytona Beach. Tampa Bay, like the rest of Florida's Gulf of Mexico coastline, is vulnerable to storm surge. Its shallow, gently sloping ocean floor retains water pushed toward land by wind forcing the sea ashore. Barrier islands near Clearwater and St. Petersburg are at particular risk. Officials are urging island residents to head for the mainland to avoid drowning. Evacuation orders have been given in low-lying areas and other vulnerable communities in six counties around Tampa Bay. Not all residents face mandatory evacuation, but around one million people in coastal areas do. Energy companies have also begun shutting down their pipelines and fuel delivery terminals ahead of Milton's expected landfall. The city of Tampa isn't used to storms on quite this scale. The National Weather Service says the area was last hit by a major hurricane in 1921. Eight people died, winds up to 120 miles per hour were recorded, and a storm surge as high as 11 feet destroyed coastal structures. Since then, its population has grown at nearly sevenfold. The unnamed hurricane in 1921 was a Category 3. Milton is expected to be a Category 5. We've never had one like this. I've been here for 38 years and never had one that forced us to do this. Never being able to find fuel. This is the only place that has fuel. We boarded up the windows with uh, metal sheeting. Uh, we've uh, cleaned everything up, uh, tried to have uh, some tree limbs and stuff trimmed previous, but uh, really just uh, a matter of getting family together in one spot. Well, we were ordered to evacuate. And uh, if anybody knows anything about Florida, when you don't evacuate when you're ordered to, you can pretty much die. You know, they've, they've had a lot of people here stay at their homes and they end up drowning. And, you know, it's just not worth it. You know, the house can be replaced, the stuff can be replaced. Uh, so it's just better to get out of town. If you can leave, leave, please, just go. Find a shelter, a neighbor, somebody. Go inland if, if you if nothing else. You know, it's got just get out of Tampa. Try to get out of Tampa.
Hurricane Milton has formed in the Gulf of Mexico, where the seas are incredibly hot at the moment, um, it intensified extremely quickly. So it's the most rapidly intensifying hurricane that we've seen since Hurricane Wilma in 2005. Um, and its central pressure actually dropped below 900 millibars, which is very rare. Um, initially, it was um, a slightly smaller hurricane, but then it's redeveloped and now um, become a larger Category 5 hurricane. And it's, now we're seeing it approach um, Florida. We're still expecting a powerful hurricane uh, to reach the coast of Florida as we get into the uh, late evening hours tomorrow night or the early morning hours on Thursday. There's storm surge warning in effect for almost the entire west coast of Florida from Flamingo up to Sewanee River. We're very concerned about this area from Bonita Beach up to Chasawitska where we could see an excess of five feet above of inundation above ground level. And in this purple area, basically from Pinellas County, Hillsborough County, Tampa Bay, Sarasota, Manatee County, somewhere in this region is going to experience 10 to 15 feet of inundation above ground level. This is destructive, life-threatening storm surge, not a safe environment to stay in. All right, go ahead. This is nine cases of water for the, me and my son and my wife. We got, we got our batteries. These are the hurricane things they gave us. We were falling. Each one that got thrown, we uh, right where it go, like the top room, dead and going from the specific one, every room, the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see a very big storm surge, which is where the sea rushes inland um, and we could see around four to four and a half metres um, extra on top of the usual sea level, kind of pushing across the land in the central Florida area. But we're also going to see that storm surge more widely across the whole of the western coast. And then again, as it leaves Florida, we will see um, a similar effect, not quite as high, but still impacts on the east coast of Florida. There are three main impacts of climate change on hurricanes. The first is the warmer seas that we're seeing. So this is giving all of the energy to the tropical cyclones, which is allowing them to become extremely powerful and intense, um, which is exactly what we've seen with Hurricane Milton. Um, the second is actually the sea levels are rising, so they're higher than they were before anyway. And then you add on top of that the storm surge impacts. And then the third one is the impact on intense rainfall. Yeah, we have just three, three more. Three more. I'm going to take these back up there. 